Hello, and welcome! I'm back! It's Enigmas! I'm uh, here to do some coding and things, and guess what? Man, as soon as I cut off the stream, as soon as I did, I figured out what the problem was. I sure did. I mean, look at this. As soon as it compiles, and like, runs again. Because apparently I forgot to pre-compile. Oh my goodness! Oh, that's right. Oh, I tricked you guys. Oh, how did I trick you? Because I reset it back to the way it was to show you how I fixed it. <laughs> yeah, soon as the stream, stream ended. That's okay. It is what it is. But check this out. Check it out. So apparently, let's see. Inside of my vertices, my my little vertex thing, my GLSL, I just kind of copy paste it over. Yeah, well, it references this tile map chunk. I don't have any tile map chunks. All right, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have any of those. <laughs> but I do have this vox tile chunk. Remember how I was confused about this thing that was like. Why does this thing specifically seem like it's meant to work with C code? What's up with this guy? Yeah, well, apparently it's because the vertex shader wants it. Well, if I flip him over to the box tile uh, chunk, right? And we can run it again. And look, it actually takes a moment to recompile. Why? Because it's actually loading these strings inside of the binary. Hey, look at that. Some tiles have appeared. Wild tiles have appeared. <laughs> and here we go. I mean, it's uh, so its origin appears to be at the center of the screen, like one might expect. All right, but remember when we when we drew out our meshes, we just kept saying, you know, x plus one, do 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 do, y plus one, do 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 do, right? That's that's what that's what we did, <laughs> which is uh. So depending on how what like game engine you're used to, you might be used to them drawing up is down. This here up is up. That's what we do, and then um yeah. So, so this is good. This right here is zero zero, and it just goes up and goes to the right. All right, and we have look at that. We've got some tiles, and they are rendering. Beautiful. All right. Now let's make the origin something sensible. So we, oh, we, 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 oh, we got, we got some chores to do. We gotta, we gotta clean up the code a bit. We gotta like move the origin over. You know, we gotta, we gotta do some things. We gotta figure out how this stuff even works. Cause you know what? I still, I'm not a hundred percent positive on how it works yet. Uh, so, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna add and subtract some things and, See what sort of breaks it and whatnot, and we're gonna we're gonna clean up the code that we do have. Uh, there's some places where we generate the meshes, and it's like, hmm, is that is that really where we want to generate the the mesh sort of a thing, right? And uh, so yeah, I think uh, you know we got some we got some work to do, but check it out. Tiles are are rendering. Uh, how many tiles is this? It's a uh, 1k worth of tiles. Literally 1024, 32 times 32, 32 squared. Look at all them tiles. Yes. Thank you, programmer. All right. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's figure some stuff out, man. Figure it out. What am I doing? So uh, let's get to clean this guy up. Oh, there was another funny artifact too, right? When I first saw the tiles appear, they were four times larger than they should have been. That's because, uh, for some reason in the original Vertex shader, there was a multiplier in here that made them exactly four times larger than they should have been. So at first, I, you know, I didn't look in here again, right? And I was like, okay, let's, let's hop this down and go through the code and stuff. You know, I, I, I set up a transformer on it. And I realized, like, ooh, if I put... Then I found a weird bug where, like, if I put a transformer on my Vox uh, tile map components in here, like, only the translation was coming through on the other side. So I was like, ooh, why is that? And I had to figure... And I had to track that down, and I fixed that bug. 
uh, yeah, already there's uh, there's all sorts of stuff to look at and think about. I mean, just because we kind of get something pretty, right? It don't mean that we're done. Yeah, still plenty of stuff and things to do. So let's get that music going, and uh, we're gonna get to coding. All right, mostly coding cleanup time as we have started to figure out the basics of what it is that uh that we were doing so yeah what else did i do oh i went i went nuts too man i was like like prove to me like i i put i put different colors of things on different corners to see if it would pick it up <laughs> but yeah it uh it got to the corner that we liked so that was that was pretty interesting so let's try to slide back into there that corner again yeah there we go that's looking pretty good. So, we can fix that up, though. Hello, Ace Bright. Yes, remember how I saved you back from the changes we had made? Let's uh, let's go ahead and re-export to write over what we had done. All right, and we're back, and it's normal. Hooray! Some cleanup tasks are easier than others. All right, got that guy going. Got, uh, we got still our data over here, which we still need to get, like, working with the asset loader. Which, uh, now we've seen some examples of someone else working with the asset loader. Maybe we can figure something out, right? Yeah, I'm kind of happy with these guys still being kind of these ROM files or whatever. But, uh, you know, we, we should be working with our game engine and not against it. Is the, uh, is the key there, right? We want to keep all of the things in the program happy and not fighting one another. All right, so yeah, we understand our resolutions. We we understand our assets. Let's see our raw stuff here. That's where our ace bright guy is, but she's been touched lately. So now it's like you know, ooh, you do you want to check him in or what's going on with that? All right, let's what's going on with yeah? Let's reload from disk, right? Just to be like, yo, uh. Check all the disk and things. Why is this? Why does this have a question mark? Oh, it's because it doesn't know what type of file it is. Maybe. Maybe. See, I don't think that. Maybe it hasn't changed since we last messed with it. Let's try to get status. Woof! All right, hang on. Let's see now playing. Sir, sweet. Dang. Uh huh. Man, all right. Whatever. Oh, we got all these chunk components and things. So what's up with that, right? Let's see, we've got, uh, we got all sorts of stuff. Maybe we need to organize it, figure out what our structure sort of looks like, right? Figure out what it is that you know, should be done here. I know that we have, like, we've got this chunk size, and that seems pretty good. You know, it's kind of like, well, it's a nice constant. You know, we know what size, you know, what you know, our chunks are at all times. We can uh, understand a lot about our maps from having those sorts of constants, a nice grid sort of structure to everything. Yeah, you know, regular sizing and whatnot. And so that is that is good. Now this looks like this needs to be cleaned up a bit. So this right here is already using the render pipeline. So we can go ahead now and just take these guys and throw them up over. Man. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Throw them in there. Look good. We have Saturn. How do we have Saturn? Oh, to serialize, we serialize stuff. Why well, are we are we deserializing anything? Maybe the tiles. It's kind of goofing around. I think. I don't think we need that right now. Um. Yeah, here it is. Cool. Yeah, we don't need to serialize tiles. In fact, the way we have tiles right now probably needs to be completely redone and refactored. 
uh, to in, in a way that will make much more sense. We need to figure out how to do some of our asset management type stuff. You like you like little spaces in there, right? Maybe I don't know. Just uh, put them on new lines. Everything, you know, open curly new line, open that sort of thing, right? Cool. Now we've got some super pipeline box thing. You don't need that guy anymore. We still have this render mesh. Render mesh vertex attribute. Here we go. Oh, we'll put a comma there, put a comma there, control alt O to reorder all of the things. Alright, so that looks pretty good. Pretty good. Alright, and now what? Now we have this uh that's that's from our bevy integration, right? Where are we at now? We're we are at map. So we're already in Vox tiles. Yes. Yes, we're already in Vox tiles. And in fact, got here. All right. All we need here is our Vox tile chunk. A little magic gizmo to help to make the things work. Yay! I have to double check though exactly how it works. Like, do we have to have it? What if we got rid of it? I don't know. Now that that's sort of a thing, right? It's like will be uh, some interesting experimentation there. We have ourselves. Yep, here's our constant chunk size. I want to hit that control O again. Okay, everything's optimized. Everything's pretty. Looking good. Now for our Vox tile map components yes okay so this is used this is used and this is used currently like still like the idea of like could we get texture atlas to work or do we have to use this color material that's kind of like you know i i, I, I like the texture atlas could we use that no oh uh -huh. <sighs> so Yep, we use all three of these guys. These defaults are all pretty good and sensible. And this was for our this is for our components. Where we kind of wrap everything up to tell uh you know inside of our inside of wherever we load stuff out at, right? So for instance, right now we're doing stuff in main. Need some considerable cleanup. But uh but at least we have like we've got this map here, we've defined it and stuff. And, uh, this right here, he wanted the map handle, so we gave it to him. That indeed is what this is all about right here. So, uh, even do a thing, right, where you have, like, uh... Let's, let's try this for funsies, okay? So we can get, we can get rid of some stuff. And, like, and show, demonstrate some things. That way we don't have a map just kind of living forever in the source code, right? You could just do like that. And there's your mapping. I think that should still compile. Alright, that compiles. Compiles well and stuff. We gotta run it. Boom, look at that. Nice and there. And this little this little map let guy, he doesn't he doesn't live any longer than he has to. Uh but theoretically I guess the memory contained within him, right? That goes on and it persists beyond the scope of this. Right? Why? Because it moves into this uh this maps thing. What is the maps thing again? It is a uh, you know, res mute, you know, managed assets stuff and thing, right? So we have this, uh, here's our res mutes, right? And like, so it's a unique borrow of a resource. It seems like you can add stuff to it. So, so let's go ahead then and double check. Where do we add stuff? Right, so we click on this guy here. So here we're imp so this right here is like the implementation. We've got this uh you know impl t resource for assets. Alright, so I can look at this guy. So so we put we put some handles in, yeah. You know, we we so we generate a new handle, 
right? And we're like, what? Insert handle asset. That's like a little hash map thing here, I guess, right? Yeah, hash map of handled teased assets and stuff. We have these events, right? Everything's looking good and pretty. All right, so yeah. The point is, so now the memory that was created here persists in here, but when this is done with it, right, it's not going to keep going? I don't know if it would have. Maybe it moves out. Maybe it moves anyway. And it'll just be mad at me if I try to access it again. By the way, you know, this way, this way everything's clear. Yeah, you, know, you can't address math anymore. Because it's moved into here. And now it is gone. So, you know, cleaning stuff up early helps to remove sources of errors, I think. And that seems a good. Seems a good. So. What do we got here, man? Yeah, man, this 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 chunk components though. Oh, this chunk components. Why are you so crazy, chunk components? All right, oh, do we need all this stuff? Like, what is a draw? Why do you have one? Uh, is visible? Is transparent? Some render commands. Ooh, we can give it like render commands. Cool. Wonder what sort of render commands? Ooh, it's an Enu. All right, look at that. Like we could, uh, maybe there's all sorts of things that could be done with this for a cute command for the renderer. All right, so like this guy, he just he has a draw for some reason. It's like you know, it's one of those things, right? It's like if I take away the draw, what happens? If I take away the mesh, and now I get nothing. Right. Render pipeline. This is this, that's what helps to do some stuff for us. Now, so I'm also kind of curious about like file order. Like we want we want our stuff to be uh, well uh, be organized, right? I'm thinking like yeah, you know here's here's all the stuff that we need to to render the thing, and then uh, I'm not sure about main pass and render pipeline. What do you want? A component that indicates that an entity should be drawn in the main pass. All right, as opposed to when, like if I didn't have it in there, right? Well, when when would it? Like when would it draw? <laughs> right? Would it draw outside of the main pass somehow? I don't I don't know. So. Yeah, I guess it's uh, some special terrainy type stuff. You might, feel, you might get rid of it and not notice anything different for quite some time. And who knows, maybe later on I'll find some artifact thing and do it. Why is it looking so weird? Alright. And this right here, this is, a, this is a component, I guess, right? Yeah, a component that indicates how to draw an entity. Alright, so that's... I mean... This chunk of parts is an entity, and its purpose is to be drawn. So we shouldn't, you know, hold that again. All right. So we got some handles. We got some tile, box tile chunks. So, yeah, what is, what is with this guy, man? What does he do? Render resources, render resource. What is, what is all this? That's some sort of a trait, I guess, yeah? We can, like, render resource limb, resource name, resource hints, resource iterators and stuff. And we've got this render resource. Huh. Alright. Consider making these panic by default, but return not option. Mm-hmm. Alright, so I don't know, man. Wow. Consider, we gotta consider lots of things, too. So that's uh that, that is fun. So it's like whatever. I mean this this thing here seems to identify it as being some sort of a chunk, which seems to tag it as being used by our crazy renderer, and our renderer is come on man. There we go, box tiles, right? Yeah. Got some Vox tiles here, because he... Yeah, he talks about the Vox tile graph, and he adds this guy to it. 
right? So we can we can look at this graph. Or here it is. Here's the box tile chunk. This is like some system node stuff. It talks about some main pass things here again. Alright, so I'm not sure like, okay. What's up with you, man? What are you up to? It's like, yeah, here's our here's we got a special component. He's our render resources node. Seems to really tag it for being used by our pipelines. Another thing to take to consider maybe is like some of the stuff looks weird, right? Uh, was it in here that it looked weird or was it elsewhere? Maybe elsewhere. Where else? Where? I was thinking about in here? Where we get resources from the app. And we get the render graph from the resources. And then we call a function on resources or on the render graph, passing in the resource. That's <laughs> it's a, it's just a little wonky looking. I don't know, why did why did we need these resources in the first place, right? Uh hmm. Seems like what we really wanted were these uh kind of these uh, mutable uh, pipelines and shaders and stuff, yeah. So what is this? We got we got some get mutes up in here and stuff, and they're gonna return some sort of option. Is it just an option? Yeah, an optional ref mute. Well, the way it's using unwrap here, I thought it was some sort of error. It's not an error to get none back. So, yeah, we might want to play with some of that sort of stuff. Figure out what's going on. Like, uh, like a little space is there. Clean that up, make things look pretty. Alright, let's go back to our map here. Now, I don't think it matters super much about the order of some of these things. So that, if there was just a tag, it'd be like, yeah, this one's just kind of like, yeah, that's a weird tag, right? We, we could put draw here, because both of these things are about how to draw the chunk component, right? Our render pipelines, right? And the draw thing. The main pass is about when to draw it, I guess. But maybe it's kind of in the same sort of a boat? Yeah, maybe. Uh, just kind of like how to draw, when to draw, where to draw. All right. This so right here is like kind um, of like, use my vox tile renderer, please. Here is my mesh, and here's the material. All right. That looks pretty fun and good. Play with that. So another, so another thing we could do probably would be to look up the uh, right component, right? Where uh, see how some of that stuff works, especially since uh, they do seem to use those. Uh, what do you call them? Those things that they use. The texture atlas. They use the texture atlas. So that is good. So yeah. You know, draw is transparent. True. Okay, right now, none of my tiles are transparent. Nobody asked you. <laughs> and we could probably then even, like what? So at some point, we generate some chunk components. And yeah, so this right here is the default, right? We might want to pass that into the thing that generates the chunk components at some point. Which right now is like the special system that handles the stuff. But yeah, we're gonna take a look at how like some of this stuff is done. Figure out whether or not it's really vault. Now let's go ahead and organize the bottom, like the top. Right, so we've got a chunk down there. Uh, here's our mesh. Now oh, we got some sort of a material down here. All right, so render pipeline is kind of like, ooh, he's a big, a big deal. It's render pipeline. All right, so we got draw and main pass below it. According to our thinking about how stuff and things are done. All right, kind of like, 
Ah, all right. So we might want to like, I don't know. I don't know if you can like store a const of like uh at least like this sort of guy in here somewhere, right? And then you could uh, you know, just reference it in here as needed. I don't know. Just seems like whew, quite a bit to build up here. This right here is our transform with our dynamic binding at group zero. This right here is our pile map chunk data. Wow. How much of our of our map of our uh, this is like our, our box box type data. That's what we're calling that. Alright. Alright. So what do we got here? We got some box tiles. Go back up into our vertex stuff and things. Yeah, okay. So here's our positions. Here's our normals. Here's our UVs. Right? And then we output some UVs. I'm not sure the capitalization on these is a little weird. It's, uh, it's okay. Even for now, I guess. So, that, yeah, we output that guy here, and here we're just like, yeah, the UV is equal to that, okay, cool, good, got it. And what else do we do? Oh, he just, like, I don't even know what the point of that is. <laughs> uh... Alright, well, we do, we do, didn't say that, I guess. I thought there were easier, better ways of saying this in GLSO. But, uh, whatever. We'll just... It seems to work, so we'll leave it, I guess. For now. Yeah, so we got our Vox Tile Chunks. This is, a uh, part of a uniform guy, I guess. Or we brought over that little int. Or that... I guess it's a float. Right? For our layer ID. Which apparently is just equal to its, uh, D-axis. Which is, uh, that's pretty funny. Um... All right, uh, I am I am live now. Yes, I have come back. I have uh, I took a few hours of a break and I came back as I said I would. And uh, let's see here. Let's let's get this thing to compile again. Let's make sure we didn't break nothing. I'll uh, show some stuff and things that we've been doing. Yay! Compiler has succeeded. And wow, ah, look at that. We got some tiles. Check that out. So, uh, we got a little custom renderer going to, uh, help hopefully uh, efficiently draw the tiles. I guess, uh, next up for homework might be, uh, to gather some diagnostics to try to prove, uh, you know, how to prove that, you know, what we did here was reasonable and good. And then maybe test out some other implementations. Right, but we got uh look at that, we got we got some tiles done. That is all very good. So yeah, we're just playing around with some with some shaders and stuff. But uh yeah, there's a there's a little thing there in the beginning. Hmm. I don't know how to shader. Alright. Wonder. Alright. What was I thinking about? Yeah, I think we're still going through here and cleaning code up. Yeah, we're mostly trying to clean up all the crazy messes that we made. <laughs> yeah, getting all of this stuff to work. Like, uh, as I recall, there's something in pipelines that needs to be fixed. Like, I'm, I'm really not liking how tile type's working out right now. We're going to want to replace this. Uh, I think, right? So to do, uh, do something better with. All right. Well, yeah, it's uh, cause that's uh, not super great what we got right now. That's okay. It, it kind of works, so it's cool. We're just gonna, we're probably gonna throw all of that away. Let's see here. Pub struct chunk. This guy has been working out really well. I can set the tiles, I can get the tiles. All of that is good. Seems to do what I think it should. 
So these worked out pretty well. Got our map. Our map has things we never ever use in it. Like tile saws. Now, is it good or bad that we don't ever use tile saw? I think that, you know, right now we're going to assume that we're always trying to render tiles that are one game unit large. So it doesn't matter how big the tiles are. Uh, let's see here. Am I deriving EQ on that enum? I thought you weren't supposed to touch EQ. Well, if you don't touch EQ, then you can't use other types as keys to your hash maps. But I'm not sure what else I was supposed to do. Um, yes, there is there is EQ. I'm deriving EQ. This is an enum. And uh, yeah, to use an enum as the key to a hash map, you have to derive EQ. And I don't know about this never touching EQ thing. Because I'm pretty sure it's there for the purpose of using it. Yeah, we're just deriving some sort of a quality thing, right? And this is an enum type, so I'm pretty sure it's fine. Anyways. Let's see, so we got some chunks over here. Yeah, that's right, he worked out pretty well for us. Don't use tile size here, ever. You mean, who pronounces that word correctly, considering that it's short for an enumerated type, it is an enu. If you are saying enum, well sorry, it's not an electronic number. It's an enu. <laughs> so yeah, just to, just to let you know. <laughs> enum. <laughs> <laughs> that's because that's that's like when, when I first mentioned it, dude. I, I've been mentioning this to like, you know, computer scientists, mathematicians, all sorts of like professional people everywhere, and it's like, no, seriously, how do you pronounce e n u m? No, everyone says enum. Sorry. I work with nothing but, like, the best in the world in terms of, like, computer scientists, mathematicians, people who know what they're talking about. Everyone says the enum. Because everyone knows that it's short for an enumerated, uh, type. <laughs> Arr. Anyways, let's see. Well, Scala is meant to... The A's in Scala are meant to be pronounced like the A's in Java. So, if you... You know, so that's how that works, right? Yes, yeah, some people do say Scala, but that's because they thought it was about a reference to Scala's scalability, but it has nothing to do with that whatsoever. That was a misnomer, right? I thought that's what they thought it was, but whoever wrote it said no, the A's were meant to be pronounced just like you pronounce the A's in Java. Right? No one says Java! <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe they do say Java! Ow, <laughs> man. Feel attacked. Alright. <laughs> Uh, I bet I saw you aren't supposed to implement EQ in the docs, but now I can't find it. Mm. I mean, I didn't implement it. Derive did. <laughs> Jave, huh? <laughs> I've been coding Java for 20 years! <laughs> <laughs> You ain't gonna tell me now that it ain't Java. Alright, I'm 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 
Yeah, some people like okay, so it's, so a lot of people go Linux, right? But a lot of people are like, oh, but it's it was it was developed by what Linus Torvald? But it's uh, it's Lin it's, I don't know, I can't even say it the other way. <laughs> Lin ah, I don't even know. It's confusing that it's not abbreviated e me me that way people will say it correctly. Eh, it is what it is. All I know is that it's not some 90 electronic number, right? That's yeah. I used to say Enoch. I used to for probably the first five, ten years of my career or so. Okay, but then at some point I was like, I kept seeing other people pronouncing it Enu, and it was like, and I kind of looked up, what is it? What is it short for again? Because depending on the language, whether you were using like uh, I, I don't know, there there are a bunch of different languages of ways of implementing it, and a lot of times, like in GD Script, for example, if you make an e, like if you make an enum or an enum, right? What does it do under the hood? It almost, it almost it's almost like a shortcut for like const, you know, my var equals zero, right? And then you put them in a list. So it's like, you know, zero through whatever for each of your VARs, right? And so then it almost is like in some crazy magic E number, right? I don't know. I'm just, you know, I work with some of the best people in the world. I don't know. Um, maybe... Like, you don't, you don't want to know where I work. <laughs> I mean, I was, I was talking to all sorts of people today, again, between mathematicians, computer scientists, software engineers... You know, systems people. I don't know, man. Y'all say it's Enu. I was trying not to leave them on. I was trying to say just... How do you pronounce E-N-U-M? You know? But, uh... I don't know. <laughs> You're a funny programmer. You're a funny guy. Alright. Uh, yeah, but I was playing around with the map. I said I don't need no tile sizes, I don't think, right? Uh, we're going to assume for now that maps are square, just like the chunks are square. And that, um... Yeah, so given, given a width, we do the same sort of tricks and things. And so we could probably even just copy paste some of the, the chunk impl over here, right? That's what I'm thinking. All right, so let's uh let's get on here. We got some impl. What do we got? The I agree makes more sense, but if you just look at the word and not even think about it. Yes, that's correct. That's why in the beginning part of my career, I did mispronounce it, and I did say enum. But, you know. So. But now for me, it's just, it's enum, and that's how it's always supposed to be. When I first heard Scala, you know, everyone was calling it Scala. Everyone. And it was like, oh, wait. No, the guy who invented it says that the A's are meant to be more like the Java. So, like, okay. So you just print it, so you just replace basically, right, the first set of consonants in the middle bit. Right? They keep it going like that. Who's German? Sprechen Sprechen the English bitte schön. <laughs> Buy beer. <laughs> Both toileted. Who's who, who I'm not, I'm not even sure who you're saying is German. <laughs> I don't I think I, I I gave all of the German words I know. Let's see, wait, no. I know. I know some I know some words from Day of Defeat. Let's see. Like uh what? Yeah. Loss! 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh der, der Schmitterling. Okay. Martin Odersky. Ah, yeah. He could be. Yeah, Martin Odersky. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you know. <laughs> you just assume you know who you're talking about. Alright. The inventor of Scala. 
He was something. I don't. Even, he's not German, is he? I thought he was. Uh, I thought he was Italian. Oh, German computer scientist and professor of uh, programming methods that. Oh, and, he's, and he hangs out in Switzerland. All right. <laughs> who was I thinking of? That's, I thought I was thinking of somebody who was from like Italy. Or <laughs> I, I have no idea how to say scalability in a German accent. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, having fun. What are we doing here? Yeah, we got some maps. We're gonna get some tiles and stuff. We're not getting tiles anymore though. We're gonna we're gonna get some chunks, right? Get a uh, get chunk. Maybe we could like I don't know. We, we're mostly interested in getting them this way, I think. Not really so much as uh Is that even the correct accessor for chunks? I don't think so. Oops. Let's keep that. I do that sort of a thing. I want to do like a what? What is this? Like just get? Um, as pointer. Uh, just give me the thing, man. Give me my chunks. How do you use the vectors? I forget. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Get some stuff up. Get some capacity. Stuff, limbs and capacities. That's capacity. All parts. See, wait, are you not leaving spaces around operators there? That's horrible. Uh, what do you mean? Like the math, ma the math operators? It depends on who you ask. If you ask a mathematician, they'll say it's incredibly horrible for you to put so many spaces around your operators. So I kind of, I yeah, I deal a lot in kind of both worlds. I'm not a mathematician myself, but uh, have many friends and our coworkers who are, and uh, so, you know, depends on depends on what you're doing, man. <laughs> like like this stuff is so verbose. Like when you're used to looking at mathematical expressions with all these spaces around everything, kind of gross. I mean, in math, you would just say it's stuff like five m. Right? Like, there's no space or nothing. You're just supposed to know that that's a multiplication. Or whatever, right? And you just leave it at that. What am I doing? I don't... That's a pointer. What am I doing, man? Why can't I remember how to why can't I remember how to do this properly? <laughs> it's just it's just a vector. Do you not have like a get? It does have a get. I, I could I swear I I typed in get earlier and it was like not having it. Or am I wrong here? Yeah, uh, sometimes it's both. I don't know what you're talking about. There's equations in code. Kind of the samey. You know, coding came out of the math world. Yeah, index i. Oh, is it mad just because... Okay. It's mad for reasons I didn't realize it was mad. What? Oh, I just expected to time. Okay. Oh, so I'm just like. I don't want to move it out of there either. Do I? No. Let's see here. Can't use the square. Yeah, I know. I think, uh, yeah. I think I kind of. Don't. Yeah, alright. Starting to look like, yeah, give me a yeah, just a reference. I just want a reference to it. Yeah, that's the that looks pretty good. 
And then even then, maybe we should wrap it in an option. Just let it be an option. Yeah, you know, just in case. It's a little more dangerous than with our tiles, because we know exactly how many we're dealing with. Maybe I'm being silly by even trying to implement a symbol by trying to implement a similar sort of function on chunks. Uh, yeah, that took me way too long. <laughs> <laughs> to get right though. Oh my goodness. How do you how do you guys do normal stuff? Oh my goodness. No thank you. Alright, since I deleted the message, right? Don't look crossed out or nothing. Uh, hopefully on your guys' screen it's gone. Alright. I guess it's not terribly offensive or anything, but it's super spammy. Not good. That's, that's probably silly. Silly sort of spacing. Alright, what am I doing? Messages brief? I think messages were deleted by a moderator. Really? Yeah, I don't even know about I don't even know if that's true. Look to I don't know, man. It's like if I delete a message. It's... Whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how the switch thing works. <laughs> All right. So back to back to thinking about chunks. Is this really how you even want to access these chunks to begin with? Like I don't. I don't know. I mean, I feel like kind of maybe right. But I almost also feel like that's dangerous. At least with the, uh, at least with the chunk itself and accessing a tile, we always know what size it is. My IRC client doesn't show them as deleted. Yeah, I know, right? I, I, I hit the delete message button. Uh, now it just says I like, deleted it twice. Whatever. Uh, you're talking about the R Rutgers 166 insert to followers primes and views come on etc etc nonsense right that's the one I'm trying to delete damn it my mod action shows it as having been deleted but not because the message is I see yeah all right yeah, so I don't know them. Huh. And using an IRC client with, uh, and talking to people on Twitch and stuff? Alright. That's, that's pretty cool. I didn't realize people set stuff like that up. I think, I think, yeah, I think I want to, right now it's public, which is like, I really want it to be public, right? It's like this tiles here, right? Or I really want that to be public. And I'm thinking, no. What happens if I make it not public? Does anything blow up? Alright. What is this? Tile socks. 16 and 16. Yes, we don't need tile socks anymore. 
I've gotten rid of tiles. Yes, because you hate web apps. <laughs> yeah. As a as a as a uh, <laughs> producer of web apps, I also dislike web apps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but if, if I do that, it gets all mad. Alright, so that's fine. But we can... We can fix that. How do we fix that? Like this, ready? We can say pub fm... Um... Right. You even really want to do that? Yeah, because, like, you shouldn't be passing in these things, right? It doesn't make any sense. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Who makes this chunk, anyways? This is inside of Maine. Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't want that. I don't think, right? Yeah. Gotta start thinking about our API a little bit here. All right. Browsing e-links. <laughs> oh, browsing with e-links. Oh yeah. That's uh oh shit. <laughs> Wow, 2.30 a.m., huh? Yeah, you're quite a bit east of me. That's, uh... That is, that, is, that is a time difference there. Well, you know... Good luck and good night. <laughs> yeah, it's uh I want to like Let's go ahead and let's ample like what is this default? Uh... Yeah, ample default, right? For chunk? I think that's what we wanna do. And we could uh we could what? We could uh implement the members. Yep. Alright, sweet. And then we could say self, and we're going to give it tiles, right? So what did we what did we do in our main, here, right? Ooh, tile type floor. All right. Well, we know about tiles already inside of our uh, what do you call it? Inside of here. So we could just sort of like yeah, default everything to being floor. Good to go. That's kind of our, our one thing here. Yeah, you know, they have they have structs where you just like you don't even have to name it tiles, right? You could just Yeah, but I may I may want to have other fields to it later, so for now I think I'm gonna leave it the way that it is. Alright, we'll see you later, uh Lord MD P E. And uh have fun. Alright. So now we got some sort of default or something for chunk, right? So having a default for chunk, we should just be able to come in here and be like default. Oh, look at that guy. So now we have this mutable chunk that's defaulted. We can just like come in here, set the tiles, looking good. Now we need to know about his internal API and how that works. Just don't ever go beyond. You know, index what? 24th, you know, beyond, yeah, 10, 23. Hmm. Yeah, time time. I kept seeing the arc thing in my head. What's the arc? Yeah, so, yeah, so let's think about our API stuff. These are definitely public. We like that. Uh, so now that tiles is not public, we can have a little default thing, and we know that it kind of defaults to everything being a floor. Which uh, seems like a, a reasonable thing to do. All right, cool. Let's see, map with. This is for our yeah. This is for our struct map. I don't know if I want to get chunks in the same way. I kind of like, you know, vectors aren't 
To me, they seem... They, I don't know, maybe they're more dangerous, maybe they're less dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> they seem a little different -y than, like, just straight array access. I feel like I want to protect against straight array accesses a bit. Right? And so we want... Uh, so, for, for instance, we could... What we could do here, right, is we could say, uh, you know, if x is less than zero, right, or x is greater than, or equal to or greater than, what, chunk size? I think I want the greater than or equal to. Do that one. Or y is less than zero, or y is greater than or equal to chunk size. Right? That's too much. That's too much. So what do we do? I don't know. Panic, right? <laughs> like, what are you doing? There you go. <laughs> yeah, you know, so like, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I feel like it'll panic anyways. I feel like that's kind of the default if we were to go outside of the array bounds. So maybe like it doesn't even matter. This isn't CC++, right? So I think I can count on Rust to keep my, uh, to keep my stuff kind of nice, right? Yeah, like with the, uh, like, it'll, like it'll panic if we go outside of the array belt. So it already does this, so we don't, we don't even need to do it. <laughs> so that's just, uh, more exercises than futility. We will assume that you are always correct. And if somehow you mess up, the program will panic. Because that's your fault. It was really dumb of you to... To do the thing that you did. <laughs> Alright. I mean, I guess that there are other weird combinations of these things that will that could return a valid result. As long as, you know, this sort of uh, function here returns something different. -y. Damn. People getting mad at my... I guess space is there. I don't know. That's fine. I'm good. <laughs> See, this, these are these are operators that require spaces. These, that's where you put spaces at, right? Math? Why would you put spaces between mathematical operators? That don't make any sense. All right, so. All right. I mean, I used to too. You know, I was a Java developer, a bunch of other stuff, and then what? And I. I had a, then I was forced to work with mathematicians. <laughs> oh man. Alright, so. I don't seem to need asset server. That's interesting. Huh. Yeah. I don't seem to need this, uh, materials here. Right? What? Oh, that's just nonsense. That's noise. Alright, have I tried Rust Format? No. Will I try Rust Format? No. Have I answered your questions? <laughs> Not to be mean. <laughs> this isn't about formatting the code. You know? This is about, like, really thinking about the APIs now, really thinking about the stuff that we did, going back through it, cleaning things up. This is about, this is a journey of understanding. We did a thing. It kind of worked. Let's, uh, let's play with it, you know? Let's, uh, let's just let's just delete random stuff. See what happens, you know. I right, organize things a little bit. So those are like our map asset events. 
Okay. There we have some maps. Who are you here? That's uh, sort of what I was suggesting. What, that I experiment with Rust format? I mean, I could, but I mean, like... I don't see how it benefits me. Uh, those tools auto-format. I don't want my stuff to be auto-formatted. That's kind of the thing, right? I do want to think about it. I do want to go through my API and I want to think about every line of code. I want to think about everything that I have done. I want to think about everything that is. Because Rust, because Rust format is you know it'll 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 rust it'll rustify it right and put everything into some sort of a rust like the, the rust way of uh formatting code which is fine if that's really what you want if you're contributing to some open source software use it you know that's not what i'm doing i'm looking at the api that my functions provide and thinking about it a lot right i'm thinking about how this is a public function does it need to be a public function this is a public struct does it need to be a public struct why is this map event reader public does anybody use this thing what the fuck is a map resource provider state i guess it's used by this guy so that's neat <laughs> right, i don't think i don't think it needs to be public there i just made it not public and i'm gonna try to compile <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's see here. What is, what's your what's your malfunction? Oh, because this is public, it wants this to be public. All right. Well, who's using this? All right. So we're just gonna go find find usages. All right, and it's used by our plugin here. All right, fine. So it's public. And that means then, by definition, I guess, that this has to be public. Let's see. So we have, so we have this map resource provider state, and we called it state. And this guy uses the that guy. That seems like a public thing to do. Then. At least we thought about it, right? What's the point? is to kind of look at all the things that we did and to think about it. You know, I, I got, I got, I got tiles rendering. Have you seen my tiles? They rendered. And like, there's a K of them. 10, 24 times. I'm not really in a super rush right now to go out and add more features when I consider my repo to be a mess. So, you know consider this yeah i consider this code state to be in a mess and not a formatting mess i've i'm happy with most of the formatting i'm just sort of looking at what's out there looking at what i did yeah so for instance man this this guy's pretty weird man so we have a system out there whose job it is is to listen for changes to a map asset. And when it discovers that there are changes to a map asset, including the creation of a map asset, right? Whether the map asset was created, modified, removed, which this doesn't do quite as well as I think it ought to do. It doesn't do much of anything yet. This is the code I got from somewhere else, right? I'm trying to, you know, reshape to, to fit what I wanted, right? And it's like, every so every time a map is changed somehow, this system is, well, the system is called all the time anyways, right? But like what? And we're getting these events. And then we insert stuff into our changed maps. And then for each changed map, we do a thing. So if there aren't any changed maps, we don't do much. Then what? Then... So, we could even make this system faster, right? By, uh, by having some better shortcuts in place, right? 
So, see, like, we're renewing up a hash set, regardless of whether there are any events or not. Right? We're renewing up this, these new meshes, regardless of whether or not there's anything inside of changed maps. That all seems like a, like a waste of stuff, right? But then what? Then what do we do? We then say, okay. We then do a query here, right? And this query is about going through the going through the world, right? The the ECS world. We're looking for entities that have handle maps, handle color materials, and transforms. So every entity that has all of this. In fact, this is even redundant. I'm pretty com I'm, I'm fairly reasonably confident I can just delete that. Delete that. Alright. There's one other place where I might need to delete. Let's see. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Where do I use query? Alright, so we're gonna go with query. Yeah, that's the only place now? Alright, because so in the original code there was a second place where we used it. Must have cut it out because I didn't need it. Alright. So yeah, so we, yeah. I don't, I, don't, I don't think we needed to specify some sort of an entity file. You know, unless I'm really confused about something. Which, I don't know, maybe I am. Let's for fun just click over here to entity, right? Yeah, this is the lightweight unique ID of an entity. So if we needed this guy's ID, we could get it. But I'm, but I'm reasonably confident that this sort of query, see, it provides scoped access to a world according to a given, you know, query. And so all the things that we're going to get are going to be associated with entities. So this doesn't limit the query at all. It just provides a means of accessing the entity. Well, I don't need to access the entity. Therefore, I can just get rid of it. Now, if I need it back later, it's, it's pretty easy just to write Entity Go. Um, what else are we talking about? What else are we thinking about? We got some hash map, default... And what? You just have a... Right, why, I had to say default because new wasn't working. <laughs> why wasn't new working? Because I was using the def I was using the hash map version that comes with a bevy. Why? Because it's using a faster hashing algorithm than the default hash map uses. Apparently you can't just say new with that one? You have to say default? Which is like, alright, which does what? Hash map with hasher default. Oh, that's what we got. So, that is good. All right. All right. So now we've got like yeah, we can we can go over this algorithm later ish. This is like a, a big thing to do. Wow. Alright. Let's uh let's, let's fix this up a bit. Cause that is uh that's something else. Yeah, this is this is where more spaces are needed. Alright. <laughs> and uh oof. I don't know. With calling functions and doing math, it's like yeah, I, I I guess I'll put spaces back into my operators. Yeah, all right. Mostly because too much weirdness is going on anyway. See, but now that I've kind of spaced that out, this here seems this here. I think it needs to have the parentheses around here because otherwise. It'll be x plus 1 over 32, which is not what I want. Alright, that looks good. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure that 
going to follow the uh, order of operations. Standard order of operations. Yeah. things here. Alright, so normals are pretty much always like... Just do the same thing all the time. And that's like, you know... I don't know. I kind of want to have the... Uh, is that really how we want to do normals? That's like, what is that? Is normals per vertex? Hmm. I do like the idea of having uh, eventually maybe some uh, texture mapped normals in. So that'll be interesting and fun to play around with. Yes. So what are we doing? <sighs> yeah, so we can get rid of that guy. We don't need, we don't need him no more. That there is fine. We're gonna let move some new indices, do some stuff and things. I don't know, man. We just like do this. Yes, there we go. Okay, that looks good. See, now the thing, now the tool that I might should be trying out is that, uh, Rust Linter thing, right? Uh, what was that called? I forget. Do you remember Programmer? It was, uh, it was supposed to help you catch a wide variety of, uh, stuff and things. Are you just waving at me again? <laughs> There was some sort of uh, it wasn't so it wasn't rust rust format. It was maybe it was some cargo thing. I don't know. It was like um, yeah, man. Because I'm asking you about the rust linter. There was like something around it, right? Where like uh, it helps you to catch a wide variety of stuff and things. Flippy, yeah. Now flippy might be a thing to try out and see what we get with it. Yeah, help help rust rustation noobs like me figure out like what's what's up in the rust world. So Man. When physical habits just die hard, we keep trying to get rid of Yeah, you know, invisible new line spaces when none likely exist. <laughs> because the tools take care of it for me. Because of a decade of experience of tools not taking care of it for me. <laughs> I just I just have some physical habits I need to like let lie, I guess. Let's see, is it important to get maps here? Why do we have the map here at all? Right? What is this about? Why are we saying maps get map handled? Do we want the map for any reason? I don't think so. It doesn't do anything. So, yeah. We, we might also... So another thing we need to think about, right? Is the, um... Kind of like where stuff happens, right? Because right now you see in here, it's inside of this crazy system. Right? It gets... It, this system gets run all of the time. Okay? But it only ever is supposed to do anything if stuff changes. Right? So, but look at all the weird stuff it does if nothing changes. Every frame. It news up a hash set. Right? And then what? And, and, then, and then there were no events. So then what? Oh, it, it news up a hash map. Oh, what? 
And then there are no changed maps. So nothing happens. And it may find entities here with this query. So it's going to do this query. It's going to find some entities. But then what? We say, oh, if it... If we don't actually have this in our new meshes stuff, skip it all. But we, we're still iterating over all of the things. <laughs> so this, so see, this whole this whole thing is just like all sorts of messed up. Uh, let's see what we can do about it. Um, hmm. Let our, let our map of them. What is this? The thing that's passed in? Yep, okay. So we can iter over map events, which is going to return to me a double ended iterator. That's interesting. Or something that implements a double ended iterator, at least, right? Great, double ended iterator, iterators and stuff, sure. We can do next and backs. Can I get some sort of length on this guy? Right? Let's see, I don't know, man. Alright. So that's for fun. I just wanna know. I don't know if it has next, I think. Alright, so what are we gonna do? We wanna do something like Yo State. Yeah. I hear you've got this map event reader. Yeah. Um. Alright, so. Alright. Map event reader. It's, that's just. That's just. So this is just the reader. This is an event reader. Oh, last event count. Ah! reads events of type T in order and tracks which events have already been read. Therefore, last events count. Hmm. Hmm. That's not pub anyway. No, it's not pub. So here's an, so it has iter. The latest, right? Retrieves the latest event that this event reader hasn't seen yet. All right, there's find latest, earliest. All right, so that's all pretty neat and stuff. And what do we want? So here's new events, right? So this isn't going to help us to find out whether, like, you know, there's anything in the queue, so to speak. No, but there is something else here called, what, map events, right? So what, we could say like map events dot... Hmm... The res of events. All right. So he doesn't know what was last read either. No. All right. Tell you what. Here's what we're gonna do. So I guess we have to let this hash map get made. All right. But then what? But then we could say something like, hey, if that changed maps, right, is empty, return. There we go, that would be shortcut out of the function. We make one, at least we're not making hash maps anymore. 
And we're not invoking this query for no apparent reason. So yeah, let's do that. So it's uh so it's a few potentially expensive things that we've gotten rid of. Maybe not. Terribly expensive, but like, you know. It's a bunch of noise that didn't need to be done. We got rid of it. Cool. Alright, so this right here, this is part of our match event. Yeah, we match the stuff and we get out of it. All right, this is all about, you know, inserting handles of stuff. We say what? If it's empty, return. Like, leave me alone, please. Alright, so now if we keep going, we have these new meshes. And so the, the whole point of this guy, then, is to generate those new meshes here at the bottom of his thing. Alright, so we can get rid of our... we can get rid of that. Take a look at this. Holding is pretty excellent for trying to, like, scope out, like, what's going on in terms of structure when you got too many lines. I'm used to having very, very short functions just all over the place. <clears throat> this here is pretty nice, right? So we're... This whole thing is basically a method to generate... Yeah, to put... To acquire new meshes. Whatever constitutes as new. I guess they're, they're the meshes from the changed maps, right? So... Yeah, so we can get that going. Stuff and thing. Yeah. Alright. Well, we can. I'm fine. Alright. So I think, yeah, map's like kind of the messiest sort of uh, module I've got so far, I think. Pipeline's actually not too terrible. Got some weirdnesses. Get me wrong. Like I like so so far the pattern in here seems to have been to put stuff like this inside of a nip. So I think I'll go ahead and do that. So we can do some sort of like what? We have some sort of a mod called node. There we go. And then we could probably, maybe it should be pub. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll leave it not pub for now. See what happens, right? Because then what? Because we can come in here and we can say no. Boom, right? And we can come in here and we can say no. Oh, all right. That looks pretty good. I'm not sure where, where, where is, oh, this, this is this crazy handle from a 128. What is the deal with this crazy handle? Why is it like hard coded and stuff? So we're gonna, have to, we're gonna have to figure out what that's about. Like, should I just like throw some random numbers in there or what? You know? Hmm, from untyped? I don't know. From bytes? From ID? As a handle? No. Phantom data and stuff, thanks. 
Could just be a unique identifier, so my copying and pasting it from some other plugin <laughs> might not be the best thing. I don't know. I mean, I don't plan on using that plugin, so it works for me. <laughs> uh, but like, what's, what's the deal? I don't know. Like, if you're gonna do all that... Yeah, you go like... Like that. Maybe. Okay. Oh, man. I don't like it. It's going over the edge, man. It's going over the edge. I don't know what to do. It's over the edge. Oh my goodness. I don't know what I want. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I mean, don't worry about it. Looks a little funky, but. Yeah. Works. Some vox tile chunks things we got got these weird handles and things it's like oh, all right so uh, then what our pipeline descriptors are a little weird oh yes this is this is the thing that we need to fix so um all right put in calling mode to back now rather than just uh rather than like no calling so now we should actually render half the amount of triangles as we were before. Because, uh, I guess without backface calling, you're probably rendering twice as many as you need to. Hey, there we go. Look at it. It's back. Beautiful. It, uh, does what it's supposed to do. Unless you resize the window for some reason. I don't, I don't get it. I'm not sure why lines, why artifacts pop up after window resize. Ah, whatever, man. They're like the they're like the teeniest lights. Yeah, but they shouldn't be there at all. Kind of weird. Whatever. Fine. So all this stuff looks just sort of like it is what it is, sort of things, right? I just you declare them because you have to declare them and this sort of a place that is what it is all right then we got these vox vox mile chips who knew i don't want to just bring them up to the top there So you don't reference no one, he's just kind of there, he's there for other things to reference and stuff. So we go up at the top, and kind of defined first, and we got our impl, we got our vox tile render graph builder, or who? For render graph. Oh. Base node main pass. We don't really need resource thing, right? 
We just sort of need these, like, uh, pipeline shaders. Yeah, pipelines and shaders. Alright, so, for fun, then, let's do this. We're gonna say, Amper Mutt Pipelines. Amper Mutt but Shaders. We should probably say what the type is. Oh, hang on. Let's we have to figure out what the types are. Ref, Mutt, Assets, Pipeline, Description. Okay. With some sort of ref. Ref, Mute. What else are we doing? Ref mute assets pipeline descriptor. Descriptor. And this one's the same thing, right? Except for it's the shader, asset shader. The ref. Good now. The whole point was to do this. Pipelines. I can see now why he just asked for a resource. <laughs> Why? Now I know shaders. Basically wants to just make these lines. Throw them there. It's worth it. <laughs> the cost. Oh, the cost. By resources, it is. <laughs> uh, sometimes it's just so painful declaring the <laughs> the proper things that you actually need. Fine, just, just give me just give me the thing. I'll I'll get it myself. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Too much. Too much. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so they're super weird. Pipeline handle. I don't know, man. Right. Hmm. Yeah, so pipeline's looking pretty good. Projection, he's looking he's looking alright. Like mature enough to maybe I should be adding some figuring out how to do some rust docks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know, man. Alright, so what are we doing, man? I'm trying to take care of all sorts of stuff and things. We got we got some malls, we got some datas. Uh, I need to clean up Maine. Maine's got all sorts of crazy stuff. Yeah, probably. Alright, so what is, what is this? Oh my goodness. Yeah, Vox Tiles map even, right? And then what? Boom. Fix that guy out. Alright, then what? That was all part of map. You could just boop. Fix that guy, fix that guy. Looking good. Fix that up. Alright. What else do we want? Go Alt O. Alright, it's all crate, it's all bevy eye, it's bevy integration, in case anybody doesn't know. We've got some camera systems, we've got some visibility entries, we've got some window mode. Yeah, that all looks pretty good. Alright, uh, yeah, right now our window mode is windowed. But yeah, that's another reason. We need to get in here and do some windowing. Yeah, we need to. We need to make our windows pop. We need to make them good, man. We need to be able to, like, save where they uh, leave off at, that sort of thing. You know, persist some, uh, persist some options and things, like whether or not you're windowed or full screen mode. Right? Or just, like, a maximized window sort of a, sort of a mode. You know, maybe add some buttons on the top right. I don't know, man. <laughs> Yeah, for when you're in borderless full screen mode. <laughs> we got here, man. We got some. Yeah, there's our clear color. We got some default plugins. We can add a plugin. What else can we do? Yeah, system stages. Alright, that's our camera. Camera system. Got some sort of camera system? Mm, yeah, yeah, same uh, one we normally do. Yeah, right. Add system to stage. This is all part of that. This is part of our post update pixel ortho projection system. All right, so that seems good. What else do we want? I guess we, we don't need these texture atlases. We don't need materials here, huh? Oh, what's funny is we already have materials to put there, so no. Alright, so we have this asset server. Asset server does things like load synchronously. Like, you know, not too, too much for it to load. We don't need to have scaling anymore. Not for rendering any of our tiles anyway, right? That looks pretty good. Learn how to efficiently render tile map. You do completed. Uh, at least I, I think so. Again, we should probably run some diagnostics or something to determine what we did. Oh, yes. Yeah, so this right here is our setup where we set up our chunk. Here's our map handle, where we give it our chunk. All right, and we could uh, we could figure out how to give things all sorts of chunks and whatnot. Like uh, you can you can make a level where it's like really long, like up down or whatever, right? Kind of like those uh, those games, those uh, gun bullet hell games, that are just constantly scrolling up, right? Or, you know, it appears that your character is constantly moving up, or flying up, or whatever it is, right? You, you have, like, a width of two, two chunks, right? <laughs> you just keep adding. You just keep adding to the height of it. So that's pretty funny. Do stuff like that. Map width one. Good. Like, yeah, right. okay, so we got a cool little handle guy there, and that looks cool. We get him back. 
throw them inside of there. Boom. Pretty great. All right. What is this? This is our clear material handle. Our color. It's our color material. From our color material. This guy's got a similar thing going on, right? The color material is only ever referenced by the one thing. So we should probably do something again, right? Where it's like, let this guy is equal to a thing. All right, what type of thing should it be equal to? Well, uh, I guess what we could do. Why don't we just target that? So we could do that, right? And then we could do what? And you do stuff like this. Boom. Throw that down there. Oh. Uh, do we need to do anything with me? No. Do we need to do anything with this guy? No. <laughs> now why don't we just... Then why don't we just simplify it? Huh? Right? Let's do that. That. And then what? You just get rid of all of that. Oh. And then what? Do that semicolon. There we go. Got it. Especially if we never need to look at it, right? That's kind of the idea. Now what? Oh, what? What about this chunk? New chunk. And that's the last we hear of it, right? Yeah. All right. That guy looks like. Yeah, it's like spit an image for this sort of treatment right here. But I don't even know map. Yeah chunk that we define. We don't need to outlive this. Right? And even then. Alright, so now we've got some chunk. We give it to our map. And we're done with them. We're done with both things. And we now we have a map hand. Alright, so that looks pretty. I'm really still curious about this texture. It's the select texture atlas. Is, oh, I don't know. Definitely not sure about the other thing. The you know, color material? It's kind of weird. Think about that. Hmm. That's fine. That's fine. So we can get rid of this. We can go back to we can go back to spoilers. To quickly look up texture atlas code. We need some texture atlas code. That's one thing. Yes, that's what we want right there. Boom, we could do that. Now we got a lot. Map hand. We don't need to. We don't need to hold on to stuff, right? They're not using too much. Hey, Wolfie's there, and she's got some sort of weird. Uh, what is this mild mind manners? What is, what is that about? Twitch global emo. I don't know. It uh, looks pretty cool. Uh, you just discover that one, Wolfie. <laughs> oh man, how you been? Every, everything doing okay? All is quiet? All is well? That sort of thing? I don't know. Alright. Yeah, I got a, got a funny idea for formatting these nested for loops here. Because <laughs> it's like, come on, we, we know what's happening. Do we, do we, do we need all that? Alright, there we go. Boom. Got that? That looks pretty. That looks prettier now, maybe. Yeah, good. Getting kids to bed. Wow. All right. Have fun with that. All right. 
Now what, if x is equal to zero, or y is equal to zero, or chunk size is... <laughs> yeah, that's how we made our, that's how we made the walls. Right, alright. So we've got auto map generation now, that's pretty sweet, man. Yeah, that's, my, that's our first random map generator right there. We randomly generated a map. I guess it wasn't that random. A procedurally generated one, there you go, that's, that's what it is. We've got a uh, procedural map generator already. So that is pretty sweet. I'm gonna have, yeah, having fun with that. All right, it's amazing to me that the camera somehow doesn't default to this, considering what's going on. But whatever. Projection dot clone. Where did projection come from? Way up there. Way up there. All by himself. Oh goodness. And like, do we need? Do we need to hold on to him? To to access this far thing, I guess. Right? But, uh, I don't know, man. I don't like the idea of, let's, let's put him back closer to where the commands are. And I'm like, let's let bar equal to projection dot bar. Alright? Then, then we don't have to worry about, like, cloning the projection. We can just give it to it. Not worry about it. And then we can uh, go ahead and just use our, our locally obtained bar. There we go. And that looks a little tidier. Yeah. Tidy this stuff up. But not in a formatting way. <laughs> in a coding way. Alright. So yeah. I mean, like, we got... <clears throat> so if we got, um... What? A little camera there. Looking pretty good. We got some box tile map components. All of them pretty good. Now I don't need to take a look at mom. If anything, I need to, like, maybe I need to document it. It's another, another target for learning uh, Rust, uh, Rust documentation. Being like, yeah, it's been around for a while, you know. It works. It's kind of. You know, we haven't really used it yet. You know. You start making it, uh, look professional, I guess. Alright, I like, I like it when stuff looks professional. Don't ask me, don't ask me to document stuff when I'm in the middle of an experiment. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna do it. Wouldn't be prudent at this juncture. Oh yeah, that needs a, that needs a space there. Uh huh. So what is what is X and Y here? And it's like being all nutty. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes. So. I don't know. Kind of weird to do. Alright. mean I for our indices. This is for each chunk. This does do really need to be nude up here, just like this. That looks good. Anything else to do? Here, let's go. Deserving of its own little function or something. Do the thing and get out. Alright, we have these new meshes. 
think I might want to put the code that generates these meshes somewhere else. I don't know that they need access to much, right? Just the sort of just the just the tile type that's being stored in the in the in, inside of the chunk. Okay. I think that's that's it. That's all it really needs, right? I feel like this is sort of a function that could just you know operate on a chunk. After all, like, what do we what do we need to make it happen, right? All right, for each chunk. All right, so let's start right in here is where you is where you'd call it. Hey, chunk, yeah. Give me a give me a mesh. Oh, okay. And it gets you a mesh. That's all it needs to do is like, okay, let all these things equal the new stuff. All right, cool, and do all of that, do all the pushing, do all of that, and then what? It basically just returns that. Oh. Done. So I don't think any of this code really belongs. In it. It's kind of the thing, right? You should just be able to call a function on a chunk, or pass a chunk into a function, right? However you want to do it. And then, uh, and you get a mesh back. Yeah, I think, uh, what's important there is knowing how tiles map to UV stuff. That's about it, really. Um, yeah, I mean, you think a texture atlas would be good for, but I don't know, figuring, figuring stuff out. Alright, so yeah. We established some new chunk meshes. Which are presumably added to. This is for the changed map. Right now our current map only has the one mesh. Right? Right, so it only has... Current chunk only has the one mesh. So only having the one mesh, yeah, yeah, loop through it the ones and put it in there once. And then what? And we've got these new keys, new meshes. Contains a key, map handle. Right, we say if that didn't happen, continue. Why? Is to avoid unnecessary, like, prolonged nesting. Right? That's... That's what that's about. Now what? We said, okay. A hey, mesh list. Yeah. We're gonna iterate over some stuff. Where did mesh list come from? Oh, we have this new meshes thing. Remember? We just, we just, we just did a whole thing about it. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So, man, just kind of the replica, like the redundancy of the, some of the stuff in this function, man. Hmm. Not liking it. I don't know. We're gonna. We're gonna have to play around with it. We're gonna have to make it nice. We're gonna make it good. Hmm. All right. Well, seems like Thursday night. I guess it's getting late for a lot of folks. A lot of my best friends, they've gone away. Uh, I could, uh, I can wake up early. I can get started on this tomorrow. Well, yeah, but then a lot of people can't watch it at night or while well, they're at work. That's okay. As long as I'm getting code done and stuff, right? It's kind of the idea. I think I have maybe some more documentation to do. Yeah, I gotta figure out how to do some do some Rust docs. I'm really not liking this function. This giant process box tiles function. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna see about playing with that a lot. Um.
You know, it's just... Mm. There's a lot of looping, is what it is, right? First, we're, we're looking for all of the changed maps. And I, I just put this in there, because that actually helps, will save some processing. Not a lot, but, you know, something. You know, the allocating and freeing, you know, and the freeing of this hash map, at least, right? Not to mention, you know, exercising this query when we're just going to continue through everything when it's empty. Because when changed maps is empty, then these new meshes, by definition, are, uh, you know... Man, I'm, I'm still not used to iterative or imperative style programming anymore. I'm very used to functional programming. It's, to me, all of the stuff just looks... It just looks nasty. Oh, my God, I don't know, man. Yeah. Doing up all sorts of things and doing stuff. And I know that Rust has some decent functional sort of style going for it. Yeah, so it might be, might be worth looking into that more. You know, because it'd be one of those things, right, where it's like... Like, in a functional sort of way... Yeah, sure, you know, I get this iterator, you know, then, then for... You know, then I want to I do some sort of, like, map to an option. Right? Or either it's... You know... Even then, yeah, it's more of a filter, really. Okay. But not, no. No, no. What are we doing? We, we're, we're extracting the handles. That's what we're doing. This is like a map where you just extract the handles from it. That's it. Yeah, I guess, well, this one here is special, because, like, yeah, you're going to remove him, right? But, like, what, remove him from changed maps? Which, I guess multiple events can come, so I guess he could be created and or modified and then removed. And, like, we just now have checked our mailbox and we got all of those things. So, yeah. But basically you need a, a nice way to convert it all down into something, right? That's the, uh, that's the idea. And then what? But yeah, but if our change maps is empty, leave... New meshes. I don't, yeah, I, I don't think I like the mesh generation code being inside of this function. I think I want to move it. Then I can just call like chunk dot get mesh. And boom, it made me the mesh. I'm good, I'm happy, right? The other thing we need to take care of too, I think, are the tiles. Right? It's like they kind of work, but I don't like them. I don't see them scaling well. Uh, me just kind of hard coding a bunch of tiles, you know, telling you where they are <laughs> on this on this crazy giant image, right? And just like assuming everything is going to be okay. There's also somewhere. Or not, oh, no, I, oh, okay, no, I didn't actually have any math to do that. I just had like I have yeah, in, inside of here, I just hard coded like here. Here are all the vector positions of the things. Let's do that. <laughs> so we kind of have like an index sort of way of looking at it. We have a, a position sort of way of looking at it. I don't know, newing these things up every time too, rather than just like, you know, here's the thing, use it. Mm, I don't know. But then like a lot of times this stuff just gets copied over anyways, right? So what am I gonna do? I don't know. Yeah, I'm thinking that our bevy experiment so far is actually going rather well. I mean, like, the only, like, one of the few super, like, one of the big ticket items left as far as features go for the, for the map. In terms of getting to what the uh, original dude had. It's changing the, kind of the origin point of the map so it's centered or something. Or at least somewhere that I can, like, say where it is, right? 
And uh, that's that's what you want, right? You you should be able to generate a map and put on there some sort of a spawn point, and like boom, that that, that becomes like the center or whatever, right? Wherever wherever your player gets dropped down at. Or heck, even if it's just like, no, it's always the center of the map that's the center of the map. That's always the origin. All right, fine. But I still then need to be able to adjust from there the camera so that we're looking at wherever your player spawn. But, uh, but still, yeah. So, it's, you know, that's the sort of thing that we're thinking about, we're looking at. You know, if I, if I really wanted to, I, I could have started getting systems up and going already so that we could... Uh, Use WASD to pan through the to pan through our map. See how that looks, you know. Uh, it seems like resizing the window generates a little bit of artifacting. I'm not sure why. And uh, logically, it doesn't seem as though it should. Maybe uh, some floating point errors is what I'm guessing somewhere. You know. Um, I don't know. Just occasionally see little pixels where you should not see any pixels. I don't like that. It's not good. We need our, uh, you know, we need our little meshes to line up with the pixel grid perfectly. That's sort of the, uh, that's the idea. See? Look at that. That's, mm. And, like, nothing I'm aware of should be causing that. Which is so weird. So weird. Alright. Eh. Whatever. So, we'll figure it out. Figure it out. Now, there's gotta be some sort of floating point. Maybe it's, uh... Something weird about how I, my camera's working. Something weird about the, uh... How our meshes are being built. I don't know, I mean, it seems like whole numbers all the way. Basically trying to make them whole numbers. <laughs> Alright, but yeah, I think uh, the Bev Experiment's doing well. I'm gonna be checking this in, I'm gonna be coming up with some new to-dos, and we, uh, Figuring out what else what else we got going. But look at this, we rendered some tiles, and that's a, that's a full K worth of tiles, right? 1024. Uh, yeah, 32 times 32. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Oh, and like, look at this. We got nice walls around the edges of it. You know? That's from our procedural map generator. So we have one of those now, which is a, uh, Pretty fun. All right. Well, I will see you guys later, I think. Yes. So, good night and good luck.